Let me introduce you to the SAP Business One Studio Suite. This is the next generation of Screen Painter, which consists of a set of tools to extend SAP Business One from customization to extension development. The SAP Business One Studio Suite can be run in two modes for SAP Business One Release 9.0. There is a standalone mode or a fully integrated mode with Microsoft Visual Studio. The SAP Business One Standalone Development Studio is a complete new development that supports all functions available with Screen Painter. It includes two specific design elements in SAP Business One 9.0, a Forms Designer and a Workflow Designer. SAP Business One Studio for Microsoft Visual Studio is a full integration of the SAP Business One Studio with Microsoft's Visual Studio Suite. Many developers are very familiar and like to use Visual Studio for creating Business One Forms and user interface enhancements. The SAP Business One Forms Designer in Visual Studio is the same designer as the standard Windows Forms Designer, allowing developers to easily design user, user-defined objects and system forms and event handling with a simple drag-and-drop process. Add-on code generation is based on the SDK user interface object level events. You can easily share the input and output of data between SAP Business One Studio and Business One Studio for Microsoft Visual Studio. The tool is very easy to use and greatly speeds up SAP Business One add-on development without the steep learning curve. We are now logged in to the SAP Business One Studio. We are going to show you how easy it is for consultants or developers to create a simple user form and to edit an existing system form without the need to generate a lot of code. So we're going to begin by creating a new project. To do this, we select Create Add-on and then we define our project name, which will be called My New Form. We then select the folder in which the project will be saved in. So now we've created a new project for our new form. From the toolbox, we can easily drag and drop the controls and elements we would like to add to our user form. We're going to create a new user form in the Business Partner table, which is the OCRD table in Business One. This user form will have a choose from list selection of the business partner codes and a link button which will enable users to drill down into the selected business partner. To do this, we're going to select the edit text field and we're going to drag this into our form. This edit text field will then be defined as a choose from list field. We now need to select a data source for this field, which will be referencing the OCRD business partner table and the choose from list control. And to do this, we select our data source. So we double click on our data source and we also double click on the additional data source, which is going to be a choose from list. Now we need to bind or link the choose from list control to the data source by configuring the properties of these elements. And to do this, we select the data source, for example, and on the right hand side, we've got a list of properties associated to this data source. We're going to define the table name for this data source as the OCRD table. Now, if we click on our choose from list, we can define the other properties for our choose from list, such as the object type. The object type ID that we're looking for is number two, and that object type ID corresponds to business partners. All of the object type IDs and table name details can be obtained from the SDK help files. We are now going to edit the properties of our edit text field, and to do this, we select our edit text field that we dragged into our new form, and now we can configure the properties of the edit text field. The first property is the alias for this particular edit text field and we're going to call it card code. Now we need to select a data source that this edit text field is going to reference and that will actually be the OCRD table that we defined in our data source previously. If we scroll down the properties list 
we're also going to come to three choose from list options. Our choose from list alias, which again will be defined as a card code, and also a choose from list ID. And what this does is it binds the choose from list to the actual edit text field. And so we need to say that the choose from list data source is the CFL underscore zero choose from list user interface ID. Lastly, we need to edit the properties of the new form. So we click on the new form and we need to actually define again the object type that this new form will be linked to and the reference for that object type is again number two, which refers to the business partner type. I'm going to also rename the title of my new form as my new form. Once we've configured the properties of our controls and elements, from the SAP Business One Studio, we can now simply preview our form in SAP Business One by selecting the preview icon. We're now in the SAP Business One system and as you can see, our new form is now displayed with a choose from list field. And if we click on the choose from list field, it actually references the OCRD table and pulls a list of the business partner codes in the system. Back in the SAP Business One Studio, we are now going to add a link button to our form. And to do this, we select the link button control. And with this link button, we actually have to define several of its properties. So we double click on the link button and now we're faced with a list of its item properties. The first thing we need to do is actually define a linked object. We need to define where this linked button is going to link to. And that linked object ID is also number two, which reflects the business partner type. We also need to link this linked object to the edit text field. And to do this, we need to select the item property link to and we need to select where it's going to link to and that's going to be item underscore zero which is our edit text field. So again now when we preview the form in SAP Business One by selecting the preview icon we can now see the form that we've created and by selecting a choose from list and selecting a specific business partner code the linked button appears and now we can drill down into the business partner code that we selected from this linked button. Back in the SAP Business One Studio environment, we are going to export our form that we created as a .srf file. And to do this, we go to the menu and select export current file as. The .srf file is supported by Screen Painter, which means the file can also be further edited by Screen Painter. The file can also be exported as an XML file. So if a consultant, for example, has created the form, the form can also be simply exported and then imported into the SAP Business One Studio for Visual Studio, where developers can continue to design the form by adding additional or more complex logic to the form. So we're going to save our current file as BP New Form. You also have the option to export the whole project as a .b1s format, which is actually the whole project file, which can contain multiple forms, for example, within your project, and all of the form elements and logic that was defined. So now we have exported our form and project. Let's jump into the SAP Business One Studio for Microsoft Visual Studio. We're now in the SAP Business One Studio for Visual Studio Development Environment. We are now going to open up the form we created in the SAP Business One Studio and edit the form by adding a button and allocating a corresponding event. To do this, we need to create a new project. So we go to File, select New Project. And as you can see, SAP Business One Studio for Visual Studio supports two development languages for Business One. The first one is Visual Basic and the second development language is C Sharp. Let's select the Business One add-on project from a B1S file that we previously created.
We are now going to add a button to this form and create some business logic behind this button to trigger an event. So from the toolbox, again we can simply drag and drop the button control into our form. By double clicking the button control, we can see the code that has automatically been generated for this button for the button click before event. The project has automatically included the user menu code for Business One, and we don't even need to generate code for the UI connection. We just need to use the application instance. And now we are going to add some simple code to display a message box when the button is clicked. So to do this, we're going to actually replace this line of code with application, SBO, application, message box events, and then we're going to add the string that will be displayed on the message box. So now we have created the message box, we would like to add our form to the Business One main menu. So to do this, we click on the menu code, and now we're presented with all the code that will allow us to display our new form within the main menu of Business One. The first thing that we need to do is we need to uncomment some code. And then we need to define the actual form class name to the code. So we need to replace form one with the actual form name that we have defined which is new form underscore one. So now we have completed building this particular part of the project. By right clicking our project name, we can build the project now, which is compiling to the code to ensure that there are no errors. And then we need to run the code so we can view it in business one. Let's now view our form in business one. As you can see, we've now added the form to the Business One main menu. So let's click on our project and open up the form that we've just created. So this is our new form. If we click on the button that we created, the message box pops up with the text that we defined for our message. So now we've shown you how to create a simple user form in SAP Business One Studio and how we can export that form and import it into the SAP Business One Studio for Microsoft Visual Studio in order to actually add some logic behind the form that we've created to trigger specific events. Now we are back in our development environment, I would like to show you how to add new items to an existing system form and a user-defined object form, which we have not been able to do in the past with Screen Painter. So let me show you how easy it is to add a new item to an existing form in SAP Business One. So we're now going to select the project that we already created and we're going to select Add, Add New Item. If we select our Business One template, we can see that we can add a new item to a system form, a user-defined object form or a simple user form. So we're going to add a new item to a system form. If this is the first time you are adding an item to a system form, you actually need to open the system form that you want to add your item to in the Business One client first. In this example, we are going to add an existing item to the sales order. So we're going to open up the sales order document. And now we're going to add a new button to our sales order by simply dragging a button user interface control over to our form. Now we need to amend the code of the button so that when we click on this button our user form will appear. So we simply select the button, we go over to its properties and we select the events list for this particular button. What we need to actually modify is the click before event. So we double click on the click before event which will bring up the code that's already been configured for this particular event. So now we need to actually amend the code so then when we click on the button our user form will appear and to do this we need to amend this particular line of code.
Firstly, we need to select the form that we would like to link to this particular button, which is our new form that we created. And then we need to highlight that this form will be shown once the button is clicked. So now all we need to do is build our project. So now we're compiling it to make sure that there are no errors in the code. And then we just need to run it so we can preview it in Business One. Back in SAP Business One, let's open the sales order that we amended and we should actually see the button that we added to the sales order. If we click on the button, the button has now taken us to the new user form that we created. So now we have amended an existing system form by adding a new button and we've linked that button to a new user form that we created previously. Finally, I'm going to show you how to edit an existing user-defined object default form in SAP Business One. I have previously created a user-defined default object form in the system. To show you that form, I go to Tools, select Default Forms and open up my user-defined object form. Creating user-defined object forms in SAP Business One was a new feature in Release 8.82 and now we have the ability to customise and extend these forms using the SAP Business One Studio Suite. I am now back in the SAP Business One Studio where we are going to create a new item on an existing user-defined object form. To do this, we click on our New Form project and we select Add User-Defined Object Form. Firstly, we actually have to log into our license server to access the user-defined object tables. Once we have logged on with the necessary credentials, we now have access to our user-defined object list directly from the database in Business One. We can select the user-defined object form that we would like to edit. Now that we're presented with our user-defined object within the SAP Business One Studio, we can now add the user interface controls we would like to include on the form. So we're going to again select a very simple button and add it to our user-defined object default form. Now we can save these changes directly to the database, making it very easy and convenient to update user-defined object forms on the fly. To do this, we simply right-click on our user-defined object and select Save to Database. Those changes have now been directly saved to the database. By saving these changes back to the database, we can now view the updated user-defined object form directly in SAP Business One. Again, if we would like to add some additional logic to these controls, we can do this in the SAP Business One Studio for Microsoft Visual Studio. Back in SAP Business One, if we now open up our user-defined object form, we can see the new button that we've simply added to the form. As you've seen today, by using the SAP Business One Studio Suite, developing add-ons and extensions to Business One has become much simpler, dramatically reducing development effort and offering an effortless drag-and-drop user experience. You save a lot of time and effort using less code to actually implement more functions, providing an open platform for new functions in the future, all compatible with the Screen Painter file format. The SAP Business One Studio Suite can be used both by consultants or user interface designers together with developers who can now leverage a fully integrated development environment with Microsoft Visual Studio.